They're colorful, they're pretty, and they're quick. But this insect has got to go. It's the invasive spotted lanternfly, parts of New Jersey in quarantine zones to try to contain the bugs. Now they're popping up all across our area, even in Manhattan. The population grows and grows. Our goal is to contain this. So why are they a problem? And where did they come from? And what should you do if you see one? This is Whether or Not. Hi everyone, this is Weather or Not. I'm meteorologist Lee Goldberg, WABC TV, and we are talking about yet another infestation. We talked about cicadas earlier in the season, but now it's all about this spotted lanternfly. So of course we return to Dr. Jessica Ware, American Museum of Natural History's Division of Invertebrate Zoology. Did I get that correct? Yes, absolutely. Perfect. Uh, so great to see you, Dr. Ware. And, you know, we actually had clusters of cicadas early in the season after we previewed with you and you were spot on with that. But now, I mean, we're seeing this spotted lanternfly widespread. Where in the world did it come from? Why are we seeing it now? And kind of a two part question. You know, when you get uh, an insect like this that's not native to the area, how long does it take to develop an infestation like this? Because I believe they came here in 2014, correct? Yes, well, with invasive species, it can be hard to know whether they're going to establish. In this case, unfortunately, spotted lanternflies did establish. Um, so we they came over from Asia, they were brought over um, in shipment, uh, which is a, one of the things that we have being a port, you know, being in New York City, sure. uh, we often have shipments coming into our port. Um, um, and so these insects were brought in and unfortunately, uh, or fortunately for them in terms of their evolutionary history, they are able to feed on a lot of different things. So they have over 70 host pants that they can feed on, um, many of which we can find in the tri-state area. So they've done very well here. Uh, plenty of food, good climate, um, they're thriving. And the cycle of this, I mean, does it equate to the stink bugs that we all seem to deal with across the area? Well, in a way, I mean, they're actually close relatives to, to sting bugs. They're in the same order. They're hemiptera, which means that they suck on plant juices, um, on, on plant xylem. Um, and so they're, they're close relatives, but they're different in that um, they actually can cause a lot of economic and agricultural damage. Stink bugs can too. There is an invasive stink bug, uh, Heliomorpha halis, a brown marmorated stink bug that has caused you know some agricultural damage. But the economic devastation that's predicted from spotted lanternfly is um, expected to be much higher. And so we're really working on prevention. You know, preventing it from spreading, detecting it, and preventing it from spreading. So why are they so dangerous? I mean, are they attacking some of our hardwood trees, or, or where is really where are they taking most of that sap from? Well, their, their preferred tree is Tree of Heaven, which is also an invasive tree. It's mm -hmm. the one that was on the cover of A Tree Grows in Brooklyn. You know, they're kind of famously gotcha. a very hardy tree. Um, and so that's not, not necessarily bad. If they were to suck the juice out of Tree of Heaven, I think people would be fine with that. Um, <laughs> but they can also feed on all of these other trees. Um, but the problem is that they can also feed on grapes, they can feed on apple, um, and their fluid that, that comes out of them is very sweet. And it can cause this kind of mold uh, to grow, which can cause cause the plants to rot. Um, and so that's going to be where we're seeing real severe economic devastation for farmers. So they're not aggressive to humans, right? No, not at all. Um, they do tend to have very um, <laughs> small boundaries. So they're they're prone to jumping on you. Uh, they are very good at jumping and kind of flitting around. They don't necessarily notice that we're that we're there, or they don't seem to to think that we're a threat. Um, so you might find them closer to you than what you would like, but they're actually harmless. They cannot hurt you in any way. Um, the reason why people are really advocating detecting them um, and preventing their spread is because of this uh, broader kind of community impact that they have on our on our agriculture. So has the concentration just been greater in Pennsylvania over recent years and now we're starting to see sort of more more of the infestation here locally? Yeah, absolutely. So when usually when something invades into a particular area, the population grows and grows to the point where it starts to spread and increase its range. Unfortunately, this is what we were trying to prevent. We were trying to prevent it from spreading outside of the state of Pennsylvania. Now it has it's in several states, um, including in New Jersey. Now we have it in, in even in Manhattan. Um, and so our goal is to kind of 
contain this um, and not have it spread westward uh, where we're going to, you know, have much more severe consequences for farmers. Where are we in the life cycle in the fall right now, the annual cycle? Are they about to become a little bit more infrequent now? It will seem not as much as we head into October. Well, you still have an important job as a, as a detector. Like your job as a citizen of New York is to detect this other life stage, which you will see. So females and males have been uh, mating um, and females will lay egg masses in this time of year. The egg masses almost look like um, discarded chewing gum. Um, they look kind of like uh, grayish color discarded chewing gum. Often you'll see them on the barks of trees, you'll see it on the side of houses. Sometimes you'll even see them on your car. Um, and so our goal is to not have any of those items, you know, those egg masses, um, kind of be transported from place to place. These, these insects are excellent hitchhikers um, and they are excellent at hitchhiking in this egg stage. Um, so it can be very hard to destroy the eggs. Um, but the goal really is to detect them and to notify the people who are studying them um, so that people know where there are egg masses. All right, so is there any hope at, at eradicating them? And I, I, I'm thinking the answer to that is no at this point. If not, what can we do individually if we see one of these? Well, I'm, I'm always cautiously optimistic that with entomology uh, and with you know pest management science, we can actually control um, an invasive pest. Uh, but realistically, um, we we might be facing a pretty tough challenge in the case of the spotted lanternfly. Um, so individually, our jobs are really to detect these insects. If we see them on our property, if we see them on the street, you might think, oh, I'm sure a scientist already knows that they're here. It doesn't matter. You can be the sentinel. You can be the person that it says they're here. I saw them in 91st Street or whatever the case might be. All right. So you're stressing more observation than aggression with these bugs. I mean, I, you know, I've heard stomp. Is that the way to go? Well, ideally, um, the, the ideally, if you see something, you should not let it survive to another day. Right. <laughs> um, you know, our goal, I hate to tell so. people. Yeah, I hate to tell people to kill insects. I know, I know. Um, but you know, ideally, we don't want it's it's too risky. We really don't want these to be spreading. Okay, um, as we go through the season, you know, you and I talked before we started the interview, and I, I know your passion for following the dragonfly migration. You were telling me, you know, what it was good, but there were fewer than we saw, and we talked about, you know, is this uh, a product of climate change? Is even the persistence of these spotted lanternflies and their existence, their ability to survive, is that another reason? Are they liking the way that our climate is warming here? Well, certainly when we have very mild winters, when we have winters that uh, we're actually basically, it's like a prolonged summer right up until December, mm -hmm. um, then any of the egg masses, um, they're not gonna die off. Um, we see this for many different types of insects that normally we would have some die off in the winter. Instead, they're having overwintering populations populations that can survive um, and that what that means is that we end up with just higher numbers these population numbers get higher and higher and of course when we're trying to contain um, an insect uh, we're trying to contain something that is dispersing um, especially when it's an invasive species that's a real challenge okay uh, and just as in general as we head into autumn now um, as an entomologist I was wondering what is in your mind in terms of autumn highlights uh, as we head in and what type of, of insects we're looking for or maybe different variations that you you want to observe as we head into this fall? Well, I always love uh, these these dragonflies that are called rock perchers, mm -hmm. Sympetrum. Um, they're red, they're bright fiery red with a little bit of orange, very nice fall colors. Um, and you often see them perching on the side of buildings. Even if you're, you know, walking up Fifth Avenue, you probably will see um, them kind of perched on various, uh, you know, tall buildings. Um, so that's always a nice fall treat. They come out um, later in the summer and they're really a kind of a classic fall dragonfly. So when I see some Petrum, uh, these kind of bright, fiery red dragonflies, I know it's autumn, and that's my favorite uh, insect of the season. Very good, foliage and dragonflies. All right, uh, Dr. <laughs> Jessica Ware, I really appreciate all your expertise. Obviously, a call to arms to everybody. Be very observational about this. Report the lanternflies to your scientists. Make sure that we know where they are so we can take care of this and protect all of our trees. and. Uh, all the specimens that I know that I don't want to see go. I mean, I, listen, if, if, uh, if you can't call an arborist, you can, you can scrape those right off the tree, right? You can scrape their, this app, right? 
Yeah, absolutely. The the egg masses, if you were to see any of them, you can just scrape them with a knife. You can okay. just scrape them with anything that you can find. Um, and that can be a good, a good strategy as well. All right. We'll continue to follow the story and hopefully we can check in with you again soon. You have a, a wonderful autumn. Thanks so much for joining us on Weather or Not. Thanks for having me. All right. Once again, this is Weather or Not. Until next time, rain or shine. Thanks for watching.